it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome back to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I'm excited to be with you today. I am coming live and direct from the Furman Garner Performance Studio here at KUAF. Of course, you guys know KUAF and the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast partnered up a while back this year in 2023 as we're recording this. We're so honored to be able to utilize their facilities and just the great equipment that they have to record this podcast episode. And what's even better than that is the fact that we actually get featured on an upcoming Ozarks at Large show. And so typically every Tuesday, they will air at both noon and at 7 p.m. a segment from the most recent I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast episode. So you may actually be listening to this episode at that time. But I'm also excited because today I'm having one of my partnership podcast with the Northwest Arkansas Council. And and I really appreciate them. Of course, you know, I've been involved with Onward Ozarks. There's a lot of stuff with Ozarks in it, but Onward Ozarks for a couple of years now. And a gentleman named Rob Smith pulled me aside and said, hey, maybe we could do a program like this. And three years later, it's still going strong. And I'm honored to work alongside of the Northwest Arkansas Council because our focus is aligned in terms of what we're trying to do to highlight the best and the brightest here in Northwest Arkansas and what makes Northwest Arkansas such a special place to be. And so I think today's episode is perfectly suited to just talk about an aspect of Northwest Arkansas that I think it's not normal dinner conversation, maybe unless you own a Tesla or a Rivian or some other electric vehicle. But today, today we're going to talk about electric vehicles. And more importantly, we're going to talk about the Drive Electric NWA program, which is happening on September 30th, 2023 at the Pinnacle Hills Promenade from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And of course, if you're listening to this episode after that event, never you mind, you will enjoy this episode, especially if you're thinking about buying an electric vehicle or own an electric vehicle and you know just want to walk through that whole process and gain some additional insight. This is the episode for you. So Without further ado, we have brought some amazing individuals to the studio today to talk about this whole electric vehicle movement and this program that's going to be happening at the Pinnacle Hills Promenade. We have Gary Berger, who is the founder and president of the Tesla Owners Club of Arkansas. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a member of the Mercedes-Benz Owners Club of Arkansas. I didn't realize there was a Tesla club, but why wouldn't there be, right? I mean, it just makes sense. So so Gary's here representing that club and, and just representing electric vehicle owners. We have Chris Williams from Ozarks Electric, who is the director of energy services. And we have, of course, as I said earlier, Rob Smith, who is the policy director with the Northwest Arkansas Council. Gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So listen, we want to go ahead and get started. Rob, I'll let you tee it off. I would love for you just to, from the council's perspective, why don't you tell us a little bit about the event that's coming up on September 30th and basically how it got started? Sure, Randy, I can do that. So uh, Drive Electric NWA is in its second year. Um, as Randy said, it's uh, September 30th, 11 to 4 p.m. That's a Saturday, a perfect day to be outside in late September. If it rains, we're going to push it to October 7th. So hopefully we'll do everything we can to be out there that day. But we have 21 sponsors. Um, It's a long list of companies such as Ozarks Electric, who's here today, Swepco, Carroll Electric, companies in Little Rock like Evolve Automotive, our auto dealers right here in Northwest Arkansas, Lewis Automotive Group and Nunnally Chevrolet are part of that. Gary's Club has been a a terrific supporter for a couple of years. And we've got the Tesla store from Tulsa over here. And we've got Fat Tire Bike Shop and People for Bikes because this is also an e-bike event. And we want to promote those. And we've got any number of other companies, including Canoe and a company that uh, produces vans, electric vans in Arkansas called Envirotech. So we're glad to have them. When people are out there, our goal is to educate the public about it. 
We want to, I mean, we'll certainly have other things to do. There's a food truck. We've got an ice cream vendor. We've got a DJ out there who's going to produce some great music that afternoon and kind of keep the place alive. But ultimately, the goal is to make electric vehicles a, a point of help people understand them, understand how they're kind of reshaping and changing transportation in Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. And around the country, I mean, for that matter, but certainly here in Northwest Arkansas. And I'm sure that people listening to this, because I don't know about you, but I have in my head done a little bit of public math trying to figure out what it would be like if I owned an electric vehicle here in Northwest Arkansas. What would my stops be like when it comes to charging the vehicle and all that good stuff? And would I have enough charge to get back and forth to Tulsa for a soccer tournament on a Saturday? I mean, these are all real questions, right? And so I know that people listening to this are thinking about that, and especially for the uninitiated, for those that have yet to cross the chasm to electric vehicle ownership. But even for that matter, you bring up a great point, Rob. I'm always amazed at the number of e-bikes that I see on the Greenway. I mean, like a ridiculous amount. And I and sometimes I'm like, man, why is this lady passing me like I'm in mud? But then I realize, oh, she's on an e-bike. So that's that it makes my it makes me feel a little bit my pride is not as hurt as far as that's concerned. Yeah, that's an important thing for sure. You don't want a, somebody on an e-bike to pass you. It doesn't <laughs> happen to me, but it's possible it happens to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So obviously you have this program. This is the second annual event. It's organized by the council. And again, I always like to think about how the council's always at the forefront of thinking forward, right, about what's happening next. It's, yeah, they focus on what's going on right now, but also the idea is what's Northwest Arkansas going to look like in 10 years when it comes to electric vehicles and, and electric bikes for that matter? What's this area going to be? And so I think it's important for us to be having these conversations and gain some additional insight. Gary, I'd love for you to tell me a little bit about the club when it got started and why did you start it and what is the purpose of the Tesla Club for Arkansas? So the Tesla Owners Club of Arkansas Incorporated, I started in December of 2019 after purchasing an electric vehicle and I have run other car clubs, gas cars at that point. Mm -hmm. And it's just my nature to pull people together that have a common interest to do things related to their vehicle. So I recognize that the future is electric. It's going to happen. And I took a test drive. I rented one for a week, did all my errands on it, and I was sold. So I bought one. And within weeks, I started the club. It started December 4th of 2019. At this point today, we have almost 1,300 members now. These are members in a private Facebook group. And I emphasize private, meaning we vet each person who wants in to make sure they're not like a foreign agent trying to just break into a Facebook account. And it's a very helpful group. We help each other with technical issues. We have all kinds of social events. We've got something big coming up this Saturday I can talk about if you want. So again, the whole point was to put people together with a common interest, especially because electric vehicles are new and people, they're a little complicated. And so people have questions. Yeah. I had an elderly couple in their 80s come over and they wanted to buy one. And it's like trying to explain how to use a cell phone to somebody who's never used a cell phone before. It's a different paradigm driving electric. Not bad. It's just different. And so we're at the very beginning of this migration and our club is here to help people get through that. It's not, although it's a Tesla club, we're open to any electric vehicle. And when we have shows, we welcome any, any electric vehicle and help the public understand what it's like to live the EV lifestyle. Yeah. You know, I'm, and I'm glad you clarified that because I think people listening to this, there are a lot of Chevy Bolts on the road mm -hmm. and some other electric vehicles that tend to be really nice. I have a couple of friends that own a Chevy Bolt. That's the only reason why I mentioned it. Chevy's not giving me any money for this podcast, but Chevy, holler at your boy. If you are serious about doing that, we'll talk about that later. But no, I say all that to say, that the Chevy Bolt has gotten some, I've gotten some really good feedback from some people that are like, don't knock it until you've tried it. Right. I know it looks a little funny, but you get in and you enjoy it. And it's certainly making, it's making a huge strides when it comes to just the meeting of the masses in terms of how electric vehicles are starting to expand among many of the car makers, right? Because for the longest time, it was Tesla. Tesla was it. And I remember some friends of mine who were like the, and I'm using air quotes now, the early birds of Tesla, where you were given like free charging for life and things of that nature. And I remember th one of them giving me a chance to ride their, I think it was the top end Tesla 
on the highway on the um, the 101 in San Francisco. I was uh, just up north in Marin County and she was like, just open it up, just open it up and see what it does. And, you know, it's so weird because it's super quiet and you just put your foot down and it it does nothing but go. I mean, there's no sound. There's no, it's just like you're just being shuttled through space. And so that was my first experience with an electric vehicle. And I was like, wow, this is something special. But I can imagine, like you said, the older couple and so many people that are becoming adoptees of the EV lifestyle and what it represents. It's you probably entertain all kinds of questions and inquiries about what it's like becoming an owner of one of these vehicles. Some people are motivated to save gas, the cost of gas. Some people are motivated for environmental reasons. Sure. And some people just want to have fun because these fun, these cars are just fun <laughs> to drive. And so whatever their motivation is, they come to us and they ask questions and they go, we give them test drives. I have literally sold people on cars driving my car. Yeah. And they say, I got to have one of these. Yeah. I love that. And so that was, was that your entree to the area? Did you just say, hey, it's 2019, I'm going to buy an electric vehicle, the heck with everything else? So I researched for two years because okay. that's just my nature. <laughs> I looked at all the brands. And at that point in time in 2019, Tesla was the right one. But today, especially because of a recent announcement that was made, I'm open to any brand. And what was that Tesla doesn't make a Tesla doesn't make a van. Tesla doesn't make yet a truck that's right. out. So there's other brands that have options. Um, what I'm talking about is that a long list of big car brands are now going to allow be allowed to use the supercharger network. Oh, so okay. one of the reasons people buy Teslas is because you can use a supercharger network. Well, starting next year, you don't have to buy a Tesla to use the supercharger network. That's a huge benefit that is now open to at least 15 different brands, all the big brands you could name. And next year, they'll have an adapter. And the year after that, the car will come pre-built to use the supercharger network. So even though I run the Tesla club, I'm open to anything yeah. that suits my needs. I need to replace my old van with something and Tesla doesn't have that right now. Right, right. Well, you know, I think that, I think it's going to be interesting. You're absolutely right. And it's almost kind of like the same way that we have seen technology drive innovation in a certain way, like specifically with, I'm thinking of phones, right? Because for the longest time, iPhones had a proprietary connector. And now I think now that that's going away and now everything's going to be the USB-C, which is kind of standard in the EU and other places. And so it's almost in that same vein, you're going to see with electric vehicles, this standardization in terms of these charging stations, which is a big deal. It's a big step towards the migration to EVs. Without a standard, it's just a mess. Yeah. And some of the brands of third-party chargers, people complain they don't work. So this was a right step for everybody to take, at least in the United States. I'm not sure what's happening in Europe. They'll all be on the same connector. It's like going to a gas station. You don't have different nozzles at a gas station. Yeah. So a nozzle, it fits your car. Right, right. Well, I, I think it's it's kind of ironic that the day that we're recording this is also the day that Walter Isaacson's biography on Elon Musk is coming out, right? And well, we're not going to necessarily get into Elon Musk, but he is the backbone yeah, let's of, not. of this whole <laughs> Tesla conversation. I just think it's interesting. It's going to be really interesting to see how that all plays out and what the how the market will bear that out. So, you know, I think that's going to be, it's going to be really fun to watch. So I wanted to do one clarification. Sure. I'm the founder and a board member, but I'm not the president. On okay. purpose, I have a separate person in Hot Springs who's the president of our club. Okay. His, right. name, his name is Brody. Brody. Okay. All right. Well, shout out to Brody there. Chris, I'd love for you, being that you are part of Ozarks Electric and you kind of bring a different perspective to this conversation, I would love for you just to kind of give your thoughts on this whole EV movement and what is it, what has it meant to Ozarks Electric and how you guys think about how you represent the marketplace for your services? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Randy, for having me here today. But Ozarks has been getting on this EV, uh, I guess, train for several years. We've actually installed several level two stations back in 2020 You know, to, to this point. There's been about 3,000 charges on each one of those stations. So so we've pretty much our, our CEO, Mitchell Johnson, has the foresight to um, to realize that range anxiety was out there and what can we do to help. Ozarks as a whole looks at charging to become at you know at home overnight. That's our goal. Therefore we we developed developed rates to incentivize our membership to to plug in after you know, after 10 p.m., you know, between 10 and if they can charge between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m., yeah. they'll get basically half price power for those hours 
up to 400 kilowatt hours. At, in the home? In the home. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So that's really where Ozark sees a lot of the growth. You still have the folks passing through the, the region and, you know, they'll need this network of stations out there. But, but our goal is our membership. The EV rate I mentioned has uh, 150 to 160 members that are utilizing that rate currently. There's more and more coming on every day, but Ozarks has really kind of grasped it and taken it as something very important to us. Yeah. So clearly, obviously, you're aware of of the increase in electric vehicles in, in, in our two counties, but then also eventually there will be thousands of Teslas and Ford F-150s, Lightnings, and, and uh, soon we'll have the Chevy Silverado truck coming out as an electric vehicle and so many others. I'm waiting for that Hummer. That seems to be interesting. But do you think our NWA electric utilities are ready for this kind of growth, including Ozarks Electric? Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that there aren't some out there that may may not be jumping on board as quick as, as they should be. Sure. But, but you know, our wholesale power provider, Arkansas Electric, who we purchase power from, has, you know, that's their goal. That's what they do is make sure that power is available to all the cooperatives that serve under 17 cooperatives like myself in Arkansas. And yeah, we feel if we can get folks to realize to charge off peak, you know, not roll in from home off after work, roll in and plug that thing in. If if we can get people to realize there's a good time to charge and it's not when you get home because typically right. the, the peak That's... peak is from three to seven on our system. So we really try to encourage folks to to wait to set that automatic timer to kick on at 10. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to get up and plug it in it, get out in your pajamas, but <laughs> just uh, go do it, have it set up to charge in the evening hours. Well, and I'm noticing that all of the utilities are becoming a lot more creative in how they market some of their offerings and services. And in case in point, and this just came up the other day where one of the, one of the local utilities is offering a, a Wi-Fi thermostat in the house that allows you, if you end up taking it, they give you a subsidy for that. And then if they're able to control the power demand of those times when you use it and when you're not using it, then you get a benefit, right? Because you, you have these challenges in some states like Texas and others where you know, they have these brownouts and other issues that can become a real problem. And you don't want to have a brownout when it's 100 degrees outside. That's, that's correct. And, and we do, you know, we do monitor that. We don't necessarily want to control our, our members, you know, their comfort levels, things like that. But, but we feel if we can incentivize them in some way, you know, give them a better rate, a time of use rate per yeah. se. And, and we do have that. It's a pilot with those arcs. But, you know, if, if members cannot utilize that dishwasher or clothes dryer from three to seven, you know, we'll give them pretty cheap power after that. So it it's on them to control and, and save money themselves. And a lot of people, that's what they want to do. Well, that and the simple fact that we're actually doing our environment, we're also doing something as a benefit to our environment when we're mindful about how we utilize all of these resources that we have at our disposal. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, Electric vehicles, electric bikes are another way to do that. I see people, I have friends that use electric bikes to get to work. And it's easy when you have an electric bike that can go 20, almost 25 miles per hour. And, you know, maybe you have a five mile commute. Yeah. As long as you don't have rain, like we did this morning, it's not that big of a deal to get on that bike and go to work and come back home and all that. So, and with all of the increase in, in additional roadway and, and the miles of greenway that we're adding here in Northwest Arkansas, it's it almost makes sense to do that. Sure. So yeah. it really does. Rob, what would you say from the council's perspective, what have you heard from council members about the adoption of electric vehicles? And are people bullish about that across the board? I think our members are very bullish about electric vehicles. Honestly, I think the whole region is, though. I don't think it's limited to just one group of people. I I hear a lot of positive things. Honestly, the reason we got interested in this, and we we really had conversations initially with the Regional Planning Commission, it was about the bipartisan infrastructure bill. There is a lot of funding available there, and it just made sense for Northwest Arkansas to really press and to use that funding that's available to do more in the electric vehicle space. So there's 
there's funding available to uh, support DC fast, which is the fastest type of charger that you can put out there. So that's significant. Um, there's, there's other funding available. School districts can get grants to purchase electric school buses. And that's, you know, they've handed out rounds of grants already. I don't think we've had any in Northwest Arkansas win, but my friend Chris may correct me. But it's certainly something we need to be thinking about in terms of, of the future. You know, we wanted our region equipped with the fast chargers. So certainly that federal money matters. And we do that because we're, we're a tourist destination for many people. You don't yeah. want somebody to not come to Northwest Arkansas from a driving distance because they can't get a charger here, one that's in good repair, available. And, you're, you know, gradually you're seeing more and more of those fast chargers come online. Francis Energy's got one going in in the middle of Springdale right there at the Harp store. So that'll, that'll be a good improvement. You've got the superchargers. You've got charge points, got chargers in the region. I think Ozarks Electric has the relationship with them, but we're seeing more and more of building the network that we need to support these vehicles. You know, we're going to, I feel like I'm going on here, but we have to think about not everybody can charge at home. If you live in an apartment complex, what do those folks do? If you're a person who maybe you spend a long time at work without moving your vehicle, maybe those companies should be offering you an opportunity to charge your vehicle move it at lunch so somebody else can park there in the afternoon. It's going to be an amazing transformation that's going to occur across Northwest Arkansas. And I just think the Northwest Arkansas Council and regional planning want to be supportive of that change that's coming and recognize that it really is, uh, it is something that's going to happen whether we manage it like we're talking about or we choose to not manage it and just kind of let it happen, if that makes sense. And I think that's that's one of the reasons why this drive electric event is so important, right? Because it it does give people an introduction into a mode of transportation that people have just thought about more so than actively participated in. And I'll just share my anecdotal experience with electric vehicles because I don't own one yet, but I do want to own one. After the experience I had in California a couple of months ago, I was in San Francisco. They just it wasn't what I rented, but they gave me, they were like, oh, well, would you like an EV? And I was like, that's all we have right now. I'm like, sure, whatever. I thought it'd be a Tesla. It was a Polestar. Very interesting vehicle, super fast, way faster than I thought it was going to be. But more importantly, I had some concerns right up front. Am I going to be able to get back and forth to Sacramento without, you know, I'm not getting gas. How's this all going to work? What I was surprised with was how integrated the internal system was to let you know, hey, here's where you can get charged up. Here's how much you, how far you can go. And it's not like, like my friends will joke with me because they, I've run a car on empty and said, oh, well, there's a reserve tank in there, right? And I'm using air quotes now, but, and there wasn't enough of a reserve to get me where I needed to go. And I have run out of gas before, but that's, that's neither here nor there. I had a real concern about running out of electricity, out of power, in that car driving up to Sacramento. And what I found was the challenge that I had that I was I was in the state that kind of is the model for EVs and I couldn't find a charger in downtown Sacramento. And it was driving me crazy. I was like, what am I going to do? And so eventually, and Rob, I talked with you about this because one of the things in terms of driving habits that people that do ultimately get electric vehicles will have to entertain will be monitoring where and why they stop. A lot of times you're going to stop at places that may have an electric charging station. Maybe you can go somewhere and grab a cup of coffee. Uh, you're seeing more of these gas stations that are having EV sites. And that's what I found. I, I eventually found a charging station at a, uh, what was it? It was a shopping outlet. So it was an outdoor shopping outlet, a big one of those big ones. And um, they had several of them. And that popped up on the screen in the car. And I just pulled off there and it said, hey, we'll need like 35 minutes, if if you will, for us to charge this thing up. And I, that's what I did. I think I used EVgo or something like that. And anyway, I charged up there and I just walked around the mall and, you know, spent my time that way. Right. And so I got the electricity that I needed and I kept going. And, you know, I was actually good to go until I returned the car. But I just I just thought that was interesting that we will have to modify some of our habits as it pertains to driving and, and getting around. But at the same time, you, you know, you'll be doing the environment a service, but you'll also, you know, you'll have this cleaner burning vehicle that can get you from point A to point B 
You just have to make sure you plan properly. So I, I'm sure you have something to share with on that. So I keep reminding people that we're at the very beginning of this transition and they're expecting everything to be perfect now and it isn't yet. We have to be a little patient. So if you don't have charging at home, maybe it's not time for you to get an EV. If you don't want to deal with everything on a screen, maybe it's not time for you to get an EV yet. And what you're talking about, the charging, especially if it's not on the supercharger network, it is a challenge, but there's features in the cars and there's features on your cell phone that will help you through that. But it's more work than just a gas car. And But people, they want, they want long range, they want cheap price, they want quick refill as fast as a gas car, and they want it all now. And we're not there yet. So when we do our cars and coffee presentations and the public comes and asks questions, I remind them we're not trying to shove this down their throat. If, it's not, if you're not ready, that's okay. We're right at the beginning. But every brand, absolutely every brand is coming out with something electric. Even Ferrari and Lamborghini and Rolls-Royce, they're all coming out with electric. They've already presented their, their prototypes. So it is the future. But it, there's no reason you have to do it today. But if you want to, we're here to answer your questions. So, you know, and I'm, since you've brought that up, how far are we away from a technical standpoint of building an even better battery that supports electric vehicles? So I don't think I feel qualified to answer. <laughs> I read lots of articles, but I don't trust all those articles. Maybe yeah. somebody else has an answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it really depends a lot on climate. I mean... We're seeing 12 to 15 years in a moderate climate, you know, on, on the life of a battery uh, versus real extreme. You're looking at eight to 12 years. But in terms of a longer living battery that can take you 600 miles, I don't know that we have that kind of answer for you. I, I know a lot of people are working on it and yes. we will get there. We just have to be patient. Look how far we've come in 15 years. From it doesn't even something that like has a hundred mile years, range, though. and now we have Lucids that have five hundred mile range. Right. So it can be done. It may be more expensive for now, yeah. but I think in the long run, when everybody jumps in and there's that what's that term where everybody is uh, <laughs> uh, using the same resources, critical mass. Yeah. Critical mass. Yeah. There you critical go. Thank mass. you, Rob. So cr critical mass will help push this along. And one day, I don't know if it'll be my lifetime, but one day it'll be just as natural to hop in an EV and have all your needs met as it is a gas car. Well, let's hope it is in your lifetime. So, you, you know, there, are, Gary, I would argue that there are some uh, advantages to these inconveniences, as we might call them. You know, thirty minutes at a at a while you're filling up is thirty minutes that you're caused to rest, right. to get off the road. Mm -hmm. You're not, you know, you haven't got your nose, at, you know, going down the road for five or six consecutive hours. You've kind of got to stop for thirty minutes. It's also a great time to text. And I'm telling you, I drive in Northwest Arkansas. I want to give a whole lot of people a new time to text yes, because I see it. Yes, absolutely. And so Good from point. a safety standpoint, there's a couple of pluses that maybe when we buy an electric vehicle, I don't think we think about that. But I do think those are, are legitimate pluses. Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, I conduct Zoom calls in my car, not when I'm driving. But I mean, I, I conduct them in my car if I have to be somewhere, if I'm waiting for somebody at a football practice or a soccer practice or fill in the blank, any type of practice that I have to do. So there are a, a lot of options that we can take advantage of that downtime to multitask, if you will. Right. I think I think we are all pretty good at multitasking, especially since the advent of the smartphone. My car has entertainment built in. I just watch Netflix. There you go. There you go. So. <laughs> Now, does that that does not work when you're actually driving? Right? Not when you're driving, but yeah, as okay. Rob said, when you're charging and you need, you got a few minutes to spare, you can catch up on that. You mentioned Zoom. Some cars have Zoom built in now. Wow! Okay. With the cameras that face into you yeah. and the screen in the car, you can conduct your Zoom sitting in the car. Yeah. You know something? Um, I, I wish Gary would talk a little bit about. I'm thinking about when um, VCRs came out, and they were you know five or six hundred dollars, and eventually you're buying them for forty nine bucks. Yeah, and I think we've already seen the price of a new Tesla come down a bunch, and we've certainly heard about the prices of you know trucks and other vehicles. I mean, am I wrong to think that all of these things are going to take a step down in terms of price? You know, price point is one of the is one of the concerns people would have. But I, th I think it's just naturally going to get better, don't you think? So I think a combination of critical mass and all the dealerships, all the brands buying in, I think it's going to happen 
just very recently, the cheapest Tesla now is under thirty thousand dollars if you use government grants. That's the other part of this: is the government grants help out? Do those really work? Yes, it's a uh, it's not a refund; it's a credit. If you have enough tax liability, it offsets it. It's seventy five hundred dollars depending on the car if it's made in the United States. So you can buy a base brand new Tesla for under thirty thousand if you include that that tax credit. And, you know, five years ago, it might have been $50,000. So they are coming down. So, and I'm curious to know, so is there, do you guys like look down on the hybrids that have the electric aspect, but then also the gas focus, or is that they're not truly EV? What what a loaded question. (laughs) Um, I don't personally, I can't speak for anybody else. I don't personally, anybody who's working their way towards electric and eventually it'll be full electric. We've got sure. to get away from fossil fuels, yeah. in my opinion. Yes. So so any step is fine. And hybrids work great for people. A plug-in hybrid is a next closer step where you can go on electricity purely for a while and then the gas engine kicks in. That's fine. But eventually, I think in the long run, if we're going to solve the environmental issue, in my opinion, we, we're going to have to go fully electric. So almost, ri- almost ripping the Band-Aid off, right? Because I, 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 I do see some hybrid models that have plug-in electric. Yeah. It's I see that as more to appease or to allay the concerns that s- certain segments of the buying population will have about whether they can ever get to grandma's house. But they have a legitimate purpose. If you do lots of errand running, you may never turn on the gas engine. Yeah. You may have enough range to do all your errands on electricity, go back home, plug it in, and you just never use your gas. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, to, to Gary's point, in terms of you know nation, national security, as far as that's concerned, it's, you know, electricity has numerous sources of generation. We, you know, we utilize natural gas. We utilize some coal, still a little bit of that. You know, we got solar, we got wind, hydro. So we've got a multitude of, of different types of whole, of generation that we yeah. can use. And, and spreading that out over numerous types of, it, it just protects, it protects our nation uh, in this transportation sector. So let me ask you this, and you're probably maybe the most appropriate to answer this, Chris, is if I own a, a business where I have a parking section out behind my office complex or whatever, and I have solar on those. Does that solar, can that solar generate enough power that it, I can set up a charging station or two there? Not a level three. It can, you know, the way Arkansas does uh, net metering. So whatever your solar is producing, basically we'll roll that meter backwards. Okay. It, there's not quite there's some big arrays out there that could probably do that job at the cost to place solar in for just a charger would yeah. be a little a uh, little expensive. But but it still it offsets, you know, some of the other sources of power that we depend on. Sure, sure. That's interesting. Yes. So sir. we do have club members who have solar and batteries. They charge the batteries off the solar, they charge their car off the batteries in their garage, and they've never bought gas or electricity because they're getting it basically for free once you get over the cost of putting the solar in your house. Okay. So they're they're using solar at their house which then charges a battery that's not in the car, but in in the garage. Mm -hmm. It's in their garage. And then that battery is what the car gets plugged into. Okay. I got you. So you can charge during the day and then you you charge the battery in the garage during the day when the sun's out and then you recharge your car at night off of that battery. It's like your own private little generating. Yeah. We are seeing more and more of those. So yeah. That's exciting. That's exciting. Well, listen, I mean, I want to, I mean, this is, there's a lot happening. I want to encourage everybody, if you're listening to this and it's before September 30th, 2023, I want to encourage you to come out to the Drive Electric event at the Pinnacle Hills Promenade from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. If the rain date is October 7th, if it's after those dates, then I just, I want to encourage you, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're thinking about getting an electric vehicle or you just want to learn more you're really going to want to connect with all three of these gentlemen in some way. And uh, and we will put all of their contact information in the show notes so that that way you can get additional questions answered. Or if nothing else, you know, Gary, Chris and Rob can point you in the right direction to get the information that you need. This is a question actually for all of you guys and everybody can chime in and give me your version of it. But how can as a whole can Northwest Arkansas prepare for a future that has way more electric vehicles and e-bikes. And we've kind of talked about it, but just as we end this conversation, I, I really want to leave that as a thought for people that are listening to this. 
for how we prepare for the future. So Gary, why don't you go first? So I'm I'm on the kind of the end user side. Yep. Well, you'll give it from your perspective. Yeah. So so I'm here and our club is here to help people through the transition, get their questions answered, experience the vehicles. I offer my car. People can drive it anytime they want. And then I refer them to our sponsors if they have questions about how they're going to get charged and that kind of stuff. An example I'll give to, I think, answers your question. I went to the city of Bentonville yeah. to try and get them to do what the city of Siloam Springs did, which is they give a financial incentive to contractors to build new construction and build in some, either just run the electric lines to the garage, for example, or if it's a commercial business, put in some stands. It's cheaper to do it when you're building it the first time than to have to retrofit and do it later. I didn't get very far with Bentonville, but Siloam Springs did it, and our club gave them an award for doing that. Really? That's forward thinking. Here's how we're going to get through the transition. That's a small city. We need a big city like a Rogers or a Bentonville to do something like that or a Fayetteville. I won't be, wouldn't be surprised if, if, if one of the city leaders hears this and says, you know what, the gauntlet has been raised, and so we need to consider that. Has anything actually been built with that based on yeah, that standard? In, in okay. Siloam Springs. In Siloam yes. Springs. Okay. So I would think a lot of our area is touristy. All the mountain biking, for example, sure. and with Walmart and all the big companies, people come here. Like you said earlier, they need a place to charge. You would think if you want tourists to come here or people to just move here, that you're going to say, look, if you come to our apartment, we got charging for you. Yeah. If Ten years from now, they're going to need to know that. Yeah. Yeah. And That's... if it's there, it might make a decision. It might make their decision for them where they move to. Yeah. And you know, it's funny as I, I, I do a lot of work with the uh, Urban Land Institute and as from a placemaking standpoint, that's something that they need to be thinking about as they yeah. are making new affordable housing, workforce housing and all of that. I mean, we're going to see a wide cross section of people that own electric vehicles and we, sh- we need to be able to provide them with the means to take care of them and keep them up. It's so. cheaper to do it up front than to yeah. retrofit later. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Rob, you have something you want to add? Yeah, I guess the I'll say a couple of things. One is I I do think this event we're we're doing on the thirtieth it makes a ton of sense to if you're kind of in that exploratory stage as you're trying to figure out is this a space I want do I want to pursue an electric vehicle or even an e bike I think that's a good place to do it. Honestly, I think uh, the Facebook page of Gary's Club is really good at this. I'm not a electric car owner. I'm not an e bike owner. But if I want to you know just see what the latest gossip is about electric cars and challenges people are having and they're wondering where the superchargers are because they're going from here to Dumas, Arkansas, and it's a very long drive. Get, somebody will pipe in on that, on, that, uh, on that Facebook page and provide an answer. And it it's really is a great public service. So many Facebook pages are like that, but, but that's a terrific one. And then one thing, I, I, Gary, I, fail, I failed to say one key thing is we've got a great giveaway at this event. It's a $2,500 credit that anybody who who shows up and registers can win. And that credit is to make a purchase from one of our 20 or so sponsors. So if you want an e-bike, $2,500 or $2,500 credit will make it so you can get an e-bike for free if you want to do that. If you want to apply those funds toward a Ford F-150 or a Bolt like you might, Randy, we can do that. So I felt the need to put this in at the end. So I hope that's okay. No, nothing. We love shameless plugs. I mean, you got to do that, right? No, but but in, ser- in serious nature, I really want people to, I want you to come regardless to this Drive Electric event. I think it's going to be an outstanding event. And like both Gary and Rob said, you can get a lot of your questions answered. And what I have found is that just talking to people that are EV owners, they all want to talk about their experience as an EV owner. So the next time you see somebody, you pull up to a light and you look over and you see that that young man or woman in a Chevy Bolt, roll down your window and ask them, what do you think about that? I guarantee you they will give you a mouthful, an earful of, of uh, you know, what they think about their experience and all that good stuff. I was happy to talk about people when I was driving my Polestar around and it wasn't even my car. I was like, oh, this is great. So, so yeah, we want to take advantage of that. Chris, I'll, I'll let you close out being a representative from a utility more than anything else, because clearly you guys, Ozarks Electric, sees the future and the future is electric vehicles. Yeah. And just some great information here today. I I know just along the lines Gary was mentioning, going places, I, anytime I, I drive an electric truck and uh, anytime I go stay the night somewhere, I always have to call the hotel ahead of time to see if they have a charger. So perfect opportunity for a lot of these hotels and motels to 
you know, put something in, you'll probably get more traffic than you, you wouldn't, you know, without oh, wow. it. So, so that just on that side, in terms of the utility, I think the path we're going down right now, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to help builders, you know, to get their garages ready when they're building, when it sticks, you know, get that thing wired in then save so much money and it's so inexpensive to do it at that time. So getting builders on board and getting the rates established where where members save more money. I mean, they're already saving around two thousand dollars a year over gas at fifteen thousand miles. So it's there's a big savings uh, on that side of things. But but getting our rates set right, helping those members that want to go electric vehicle smooth go down that path smoothly. Yeah. Well, we certainly appreciate you and, and Ozarks Electric participating in this event and on this podcast. So thank you so much for joining us, Gary, Chris, and uh, Rob. Thank you guys all for taking time out of your schedule to just share with us a little bit about your EV experiences. And uh, I think certainly anybody that's here in Northwest Arkansas needs to take part in this Drive Electric NWA event happening September 30th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Pinnacle Hills Promenade. The rain date is October 7th. And if you're listening to this again after the 7th of October, 2023, just take some notes from this. Go grab the show notes at IamNorthwestArkansas.com. You will not be disappointed with the information that you will find there. And I'll make sure that we have complete show notes with everything that we discussed on this episode, as well as contact information for our three principled guests. So again, um, Gary, Chris, and Rob, thank you guys for joining us today on the podcast. Thanks, Randy, for having us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, folks, there you have it. That's another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. I really enjoy it when I get to partner up with the council and talk about something germane to Northwest Arkansas. Even though I'm always talking about Northwest Arkansas, it's these topics that really get me excited. So to learn more about us or to read or download the show notes from today's episode that I just mentioned, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. You can listen to this podcast and sign up for our free newsletter to keep up with us and all things NWA. Sign up today. You can subscribe to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast wherever you listen to it. And please, please, please consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Remember, our podcast comes out every Monday, rain or shine. And of course, you can catch a segment of this podcast episode on Ozarks at Large every Tuesday at both noon and at 7 p.m. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and we'll see you back here next week for another new episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.